So you ready to do a little mock draft? Let's do it. All righty. Let me get that pulled up. And we I, I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil something here for you, Ethan. We are going to do a full one, but it is not going to take very long at all. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, and here's one that I did earlier. You guys are seeing this right in front of uh the, on the screen here, I didn't even realize I still had this up. This is spoiling things. I'm I'm, I'm frustrated with myself right now, Ethan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll we'll get to it later. Um, so as you guys can see here, you know we've got some options here. We're on Fanspo, um, and Ethan, you can see down there at the bottom that there's a couple different uh, ways that we can do this. You can cl click Team Need, Chaos. You can just do the lottery or the first round. You can do the, you know, the whole draft if you want to. But so here's this thing here. Um, I think we should use the ESPN draft consensus, or not okay. consensus, not the Fanspo consensus. And the reason that I say that is because as much as I really like the consensus more, because I think it gives a, a bigger idea than just Jonathan Gavoni, the consensus has like Nikola Topic. I've been doing a couple mock drafts recently. They have Nikola Topic. Like he goes like three or four, and that's just I don't think that's going to happen with the injury. So that's why I, I think we should use the ESPN one here. Ethan, does that make sense? Understood. Let's do it. All righty. So here we go. Alex Sar goes number one. Mm. Donovan Klingen goes number two, and Risha Shea goes number three. Ethan. Ooh. So, Ooh. see, I don't even know if that's going to happen, but that's why it, this this mock draft simulator is a little fun because as much as those three going one through three aren't crazy, it wasn't the order you you expected. Mm. But this kind of leads into the conversation that we just had, Ethan. It does. And here's the thing: I'm going to go with Stefan with you. Okay. I'm just going to agree with you. Um, and it's kind of funny because I said I disagree. But then when you just put it in the way that you did, where you were like, hey, like, I'm like, Reed Shepard could be a second or first team defender, but the frame is just completely different. And the promise that we have seen from the, uh, the star drill at the combine. And here's the other thing, Ethan it's our division. We need somebody to guard. As much as I think Reed Shepard would do a good job, it just wouldn't be the same as having someone with Stefan's frame on a Shea Gilgis Alexander or a Luka Doncic, uh, a John Morant, even uh, for the sake of talking about it. 100%. And I'll just to put it in context Luka Doncic, he played very well when defended against Derek White and Drew Holiday. But Jalen Brown gave him a lot of trouble. And I think that's the difference between the two players. <sighs> As much as I love Reed, I mean, that's why it's so funny because I said I disagreed and then you said that and I was like, I don't disagree with that, actually, because it's just I mean, it, it's it's an athlete. I would I mean, Reed definitely has a lot of athleticism that he showed, but still mm -hmm. the, the frame thing is is just different. And, you know, this kind of goes back. It's funny. It goes back to Lou in the sense that he feels like we should sprint to the podium and he has him at his number one player. I think a lot of that, you know, sticks in my mind. And I did watch some more Stefan Castle highlights, or not more. I went and rewatched just because it had been a while since I watched him. And there's just, again, I, there's a little bit of that. I don't want to exaggerate the athleticism differences because we saw what Reed did at the combine again. But the frame, it's just different. And the example that you just gave it is also so key. Appreciate it, Jude. Thank you. No problem. Reed Shepard goes number five. Rob Dillingham goes number six. And wow. Matas Buzelis wow. goes number seven. So all three of our guys that we just talked about, Ethan, are still on the board. I'm just going to – I picked the last one. Mm. So I'm going to I'm gonna let you pick this one. Do I need to be the team player here? You picked my guy. Mm, no. Dang. Because I actually agreed. Like, like I, I – I, I agreed with what I said. You know what I'm saying? Like right. that wasn't just to make you happy. Like when I think about our division, um, I'm, I'm rolling with that because that's just, it's just going to be more important. And we're going to get shooting at this pick is the other thing. Like regardless of who we pick. Right. I'm going to take Cody Williams and I'll tell you why. Go ahead. With, without repeating everything that I had already previously said about his game. Um, we have Jeremy Sohan at our power forward. He's the he's the future power forward, right? We've drafted Devin Vassell as our shooting guard. We just drafted our point guard, and we have drafted our center in Victor Wimbanyama. 
we have yet to draft our small forward of the future. And I think Tijon has potential at the three, but I think he's more natural of a four, especially in our system and in, in, in the modern NBA. So I'm going to take Cody Williams. Uh, I'm not mad at this at all. And this is why when we just talked about it, Ethan, I said I wouldn't be mad if the Spurs picked a Cody Williams over a Tijon and, and you were vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is, I think he's more naturally of a three than Tijon. And when you put it that way, roster wise, I totally see what you're saying. And on top of that, the, the wingspan as well that mm-hmm. you mentioned, that's that's another key detail. Um I mean, his brother plays power forward for the Oklahoma City Thunder, so I mean, he can go back and forth too, probably. Right, and and he's shorter than than Cody Williams. Correct. Um, but the the last thing that I was going to say, as much as I really like the French league, and and I think that you know it's proving with all the prospects and what Victor did last year that it is a league that can produce NBA talent and NBA ready talent. Mm. Cody Williams, as much as he is also a project, I think he's a little bit more of a sure thing than Tijon. And I also think that what we saw from him, you know, in the Pac-12 as well, um, it's just, it's more proven to translate. Couldn't agree more. A little bit of a less risky pick is how I would put it. Now it gets fun, Ethan, but this is why I wanted to do the rest of this draft because I have a second round player for you, Ethan, and he's been here Every single time uh, when our next pick comes up, it's is it is it not loading anymore? OK, I have to be on the page. Sorry, I was trying to come back to the, the restream page so I could see your, see your face, but I have to be on here for it to load. Mm-hmm. Um, but this next second round pick that we make here, Ethan, as we watch all of these players go off the board, he's somebody that I have kind of like been convinced now like i want the spurs to pick him and that's the first player in the second round that that's happened to me in the entire draft i made the the little clip and um we talked about the second round in the podcast i did last friday i believe where i went over jonathan gavoni's best fits next to wemby um but with all of that being said this was the first time i had really kind of Mm. like okay this second round player catches my eye and he's on the board ethan can i pick him you may it was kind of spoiled earlier. Pacome Dadier, okay? A French 6'9". He's really a forward, but he has played a lot of the two, but he's 6'9", okay? Mm, um, okay? The reason he's played the two a lot, so first of all, from the German League. Let me actually just skip this for a second. Are you on the Ringers draft page now? Did that pop up? Uh, yes. Okay. Here is his breakdown from Kevin O'Connor. And as you can see, he actually has him listed as 26 on his big board, Ethan. So I could sit here and talk about him and all that stuff, but I'm just going to read this to kind of give you all an even better idea. Skilled teenage Frenchman who displays raw go-to scoring upside, pull-up threat, off-ball mover, shades of former Spur and 2007 NBA champion, Michael Finley. But let's read his pluses. Skilled shooter off the dribble, He's comfortable pulling up from mid-range, whether it's stopping on a dime or stepping back. If he extends his range, he could become a major scoring machine. Let me stop right here. Forgot to mention this. He played in the German League. So even though he's from France, well, this says LNB Pro B. So that is not Pro A. So maybe they, when I looked that up, it was in the German League. Maybe I could I could just have that wrong. Mm-hmm. But I think that regardless, it's still not Pro A. Like that's the league that Rasache and... um and Victor and, and Tijon played in. So it, it's not the same league. It's not the same French league. It, even if it is in the French league, it's the B league. It's not the A league. But anyways, right. besides the point, I really thought it was the German league. I don't know why. Because he there's Juan Nunez, who's another guy that just got picked before this. He's, he's a Spanish point guard. He's also on this team. Anyways, got that wrong. Back to this. Good shooting potential off the catch. He isn't yet a knockdown guy, but has smooth form and soft touch on free throws and layups. They say he's not a knockdown guy, um, and he is at 35% on 2.3 attempts per game. But what I will say, Ethan, from what I have watched, he's definitely got uh, some, like, he's got the potential to be there. He can definitely be a knockdown guy in the future. Um, Mm -hmm. Decisive attacker off the dribble with a good first step and the burst to turn the corner. He's capable of finishing comfortably using either hand with touch layups or finishing with power when he has room to take off. I saw a lot of that. Um, 
displays good vision for finding his teammates. His IQ shows when moving without the ball. He has a feel for getting himself open using relocations around the perimeter and cuts to the rim. He'll pounce on mistakes made by defenders. Long to armed wing with a strong wide frame and the upside to defend multiple positions as he matures physically. The minuses, too sloppy with the ball, makes inaccurate passes, telegraphs the ball to teammates, and lacks awareness when defenders are lurking nearby as he handles. Mm. So that is your introduction there. He is 6'7.8, so basically 6'8. They have him at 6'9, probably because of shoes. A 6'9 wingspan, not the craziest wingspan, but you notice when the wingspans are smaller, at least on 2K, this is how it works. Ethan. <laughs> Shooting ability goes up. So we're seeing that with him. And he will be 19, I believe, on draft night since it says 18.9. Um, but I went and watched a little bit of his tape after I found him, like after he kept popping up here. And I'm like, who's this French guy? Because he's because he's French. But then I see he's 6'9", too. I'm like, mm. and he can shoot. And then you just saw... Even Kevin O'Connor's out here having him as a potential, you know, listed, even though in, in most of the mocks, he's a second round guy. He has him at number 26. But the more important thing is also said versatile can defend multiple positions. Now, when I say that this is a second round pick, like <laughs> I'm saying all of this, he's going to be like very raw. This is, you know, probably another CD Sissoko type season where you're in the G League for, for almost all of the year. But here's the thing, Ethan, at six, nine. And because he has played, they kind of played him at the two and the three, mostly on his team from from what I watched. Um, and that's because of his shooting ability. With his frame, you know, he could be more of a three, four for us or be like the the third string four, for example. Maybe we want to bring back Mamu. Um, we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, but the other thing is there, Ethan, like we know how open that four position is, but also we need a third string. If, if, if that doesn't translate, we need a third string two also that mm. he could slide in right behind there. Um, but anyways, I could go on and on, but I, I was, I think this, I mean, in like every mock I've did today, he's been available. There's the French connections, the shooting ability and, and the frame, you know, kind of eerily similar to Tijon. Obviously he's much more thin than Tijon, but again, the frame and the shooting ability, I I feel like the Spurs can work on a lot of the other stuff, especially with the, you know, the shades of defensive potential as well. They didn't write down like terrible defender. You know what I mean? So for sure. I, I haven't done any research on any second round picks to be completely frank and honest with you because it's a second round pick. And right. usually I just, I don't have the bandwidth to, to do that. But uh, everything that you just said, everything that I'm reading right here on, on the Kevin O'Connor mock draft, I like him. I mean, he's versatile, tall, lengthy, can shoot. The biggest plus I see is that he can move well with off the ball without the ball. Um, and something I'm just now realizing is we have not drafted a guy since Devin Vassell who's good at that. Malachi needs the ball. Blake right. needs the ball. Jeremy needs the ball. Um, Keldon was never an off ball mover. I think that's what he needs to get better at. Uh, so, yeah, sure, why not? And it, like you said, he'll be in the G League most of the time. But if he can develop that skill as an off ball mover and shooter, it addresses that need. Yeah. And the the other thing that I want to say, too, is that last year the Spurs had two second round picks and traded one of them. True. Um, and they traded actually the the first one that they had because they had intel that CD would be there, you know, when they selected with the other one. So I could definitely see that being a possibility. But Ethan, you know, I, I'm not mad if we end up picking this guy and he ends up because of his positional versatility with his size. Um, I wouldn't be mad if he ends up being our third string, you know two or even if you want to put him at the three you think that's more natural maybe Keldon's going to be the small ball four off the bench I don't know we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out but mm -hmm. long term he could potentially you know if you want to slot him in at the uh the last what's the word the third string four <laughs> that's what mm -hmm. I was also saying it could be the third string two or four even though I would say he, he's more of a two and a three right now but put some muscle on you never know with being six nine and okay Saucy takes our boy Lou. He says ratio farm. He plays in the German league. So mm. I, I, I must have got that from somewhere, even though. And, and then it, when it said France, that must have just been his country. But when I saw LNB pro B, I was like, that's the French league LNB. But they probably play in Germany. So that's why I called it the German league. I'm glad it wasn't just me. <laughs> You're good. You're good. And another thing. He says, daddy, daddy, hey. Lou says, Dottier is a very good cutter. 
So there mm. we go. Some other stuff that he has on his game. But again, Ethan, I mean, I just kind of found this guy out like really like <laughs> in the past couple of days doing mock drafts. I have not really looked too much into the second round prospects as well, but it seems like he's going to be available. Um, and with the French connection and again, shooting ability and versatility, I would be down with it. No question. Me as well. Okay, and here we go with the last one. This one's just going to be fun. I think I know where you're going. No, that. I'm not. Go- I, I know what you're thinking, but I'm actually not going to go with it. Okay. It's Bronny, but I'm not going with Bronny. <laughs> we just knew what that was going to be. Okay, he's on Almansa that he just popped up on the screen. Mm-hmm. Just another thing. He actually pulled out of the draft um, mm. because... Basically, I mean, it was how G League Ignite went. His stock wasn't where he wanted it to be. Um, I, I honestly think it's a good move for him because he's still 18, so he mm-hmm. could play another year of pro ball, develop, kind of raise his stock more. He'll be m- more ready for the NBA, um, and then he can come into the draft next year. I just saw that wanted to notice that. But Ethan, do you want to go with this pick here? I would love to, okay. and I'm actually going to take Jabal Shed. There you go, Ethan. That's a great pick. I don't want to talk over you, I, but th- there's another one there. Mm-hmm. KJ Simpson, that's who I've been picking at this pick a lot. Mm. Uh, but Jamal Shedd has not been available at this pick any of the times that I have picked KJ Simpson. And I would also pick Jamal Shedd over KJ Simpson. But why did you pick him, Ethan? Well, the, in a couple of the mock drafts that I have looked at the second round, he's been a guy that kind of goes around our 35th pick. So for him to fall all the way down to 48 in the situation, um, obviously we he's a guy that has the potential to be in the earlier of the second round. But also, we just took, I think, uh, a big point guard and then two forwards. So this addresses the you know field general, smaller point guard, Guy that or floor general, excuse me, guy with a lot of hustle. He can score at the rim. He averaged six assists in college. I'm looking here on this thing. His, his shades of is TJ McConnell. And TJ McConnell, I don't know if you remember this, Jude, is a guy that I wanted to sign like four yes. years ago when we very first started this channel, and we never did. Um, but, you know, that's a guy that was very useful for the Indiana Pacers in situations during the season and obviously played very well in the playoffs. So, uh, to, to bring him in to just kind of be the third string or even fourth string at this point, point guard behind Trey Jones, especially with Trey Jones being on an expiring contract. Uh, I think it makes sense. Yeah, I completely agree. The only reason I brought up KJ Simpson was to give you a reason why I hadn't picked Jamal Shedd here. And like you said, a lot of places have maybe had him picking us or picking him at, at around 35 or him getting picked around that area, not just with our pick. Um, But man, I mean, he was such a, I mean, he, as much as he's 22, um, first of all, this, if we do go with all four of our picks, which I I don't think we will, but if we do, this last pick is going to probably most likely be a two way, unless we wanted to sign Pacom uh, Dottier to one instead. Um, But I mean, Jamal is just, he's a winner. He's been a part of that Houston culture, defensive minded. Uh, 12 and six, you know, it's not the crazy stats, but that's why Houston's as good as they are. I mean, mm-hmm. there are so many in Houston's program, Ethan, there are so many Spursian like culture traits that for sure that, that they build. I mean, and I don't want to go off on a whole tangent here, but one of the first podcasts that, uh, or the first podcast that I did with the other podcast that I produce, it's called Let's Talk Basketball with Dan Miller. Um, we had Kellen Sampson, who's Kelvin Sampson's son an assistant mm. coach at Houston on. Um, and and when you go listen to that, you can learn a ton about Houston's culture. And, and when I was listening to that, you know, and that's almost like three, two, two, three years ago at this point when well, that was literally our first episode we ever did. Um, I just remember listening back to that and being like, man, there's so many like Spursian types things here. And I'm like, and that explains why Houston has been as good as they have for so long. And the last thing I'll say, there is a video that has been floated around for a long time. I forget uh, the exact context, but I'm pretty sure it was like after Houston lost, um, like a big game. I mm. could be wrong about that. But regardless, there is a video of Jamal Shedd picking up trash, like a knocked over trash can, and like picking it all up and putting the trash away before he goes to the locker room. And if that isn't the most Spurs thing I've ever seen on top of his on-court traits, um, yeah, I would definitely pick him at 48. 
couldn't agree more. I didn't even realize he was like a defensive minded guy, to be completely honest with you. So shout out you and uh, Lou in the comments are pointing that out. And yeah, if it's if this is how the Spurs draft night ends up looking, um, I'm going to go to bed in such complete peace jude because this answers (laughs) literally every single one of our needs maybe we would have liked to have gotten one just elite shooter but it sounds like daddy is going to be that in your eyes and i think cody williams has that potential as well yeah and and ethan i just i like the uniqueness of this draft i I completely agree with everything you said just because it kind of it mixed as much as the second round was the second round it kind of mixed both of our perspectives here Mm. um with all of this being said, Ethan, uh, the last thing that I will say here is we close out this literal final draft discussion um, before next week, at least, is that there's going to be the, the trades. Hmm. We There could potentially be a ton of trades in this draft, just with the uncertainty with everything. Maybe, you know, that there's some chaos that happens and somebody wants to trade out. Um, but it seems like a lot of that's going to happen on draft night. But I think the nature of the the draft, again, just kind of adds to that being being a potential. Mm. No, absolutely. I think the Atlanta number one pick, especially with how Alex R has been unable to get there for a workout, according to sources, saw that in the comments earlier. Thank you, whoever said that. Um, that has the potential, or at least there's rumors that the Spurs are going to move up to one. There's rumors that Houston's going to move down from three. So uh, agree, there's going to be a lot of draft night drama probably. And that will affect a lot of this. So as much mm-hmm. as this may seem like a smooth thing, it could be way different um, than, than mm-hmm. we, even with this being a little different, it could be way different than that. That was the point I was trying to get to. For sure. 